Hello there. So today I would like to show you how to write a simple Azure function and how to debug the function uh, locally on your machine. So if you have no idea what the functions are, essentially they're a really great tool because they're very easy to write, they're simple to administer and they're really cheap. Um, one of the coolest feature, however, is their name. Um, so I believe, you know, if you go to your boss and say that you're going to have to write a serverless and stateless function to resolve a certain problem, it's highly likely that you're going to get a lot of budget to do so. So uh, let's just start. So essentially, in order to uh, create a function, you need a specific uh, type of the project, which is called a uh, function. Uh, project so what I'm going to do here I'm just going to show you how to find this project so it is it is actually on top of the solution you just go here add new project and then you can just search in a template uh, for a function so quite quite simple I would say uh, however I already do have a project so I don't need to add anything I can just add a new function if I want to do so and to add a function I'm just going to do a right click on the project level and I'm going to say add new Azure function. Um, so here I can just name the function and say, okay, test, uh, test F. And uh, right after this uh, screen, I'm going to get a new one saying, uh, what kind of type of the trigger do I want to run my function? So as you may see, there are really different triggers uh, utilizing specific scenarios. For instance, you can have, uh, in my case, service bus uh, trigger, which is quite useful for asynchronous operations, um, where you're sending essentially a message to the, to the service bus and then processing it afterwards. You have also a lot of other uh, triggers like HTTP trigger. Um, you know, th there is really a lot of it and, uh, you know, they, they have a really, really specific scenarios. One of the common used is also timer trigger where you can specify uh, interval in which uh, your function is going to be executed. However, today I'm just going to talk a bit about a function that I just recently wrote. Uh, it is using a service bus uh, queue trigger. And uh, if, I just, oops, if, I, if I just open it here, you will see how uh, the interface of the function looks like. So uh, you have obviously a certain attribute here, which is specifying the, the function name and you have a public uh, method here, uh, which is called run in this case. And uh, this uh, a function is being executed on a service bus trigger. Uh, there is a specific queue which we're targeting and there is a connection string which we're specifying in our uh, configuration settings. So it's right here. Everything that I need is, is essentially here, including the, the, the connection string. Now, uh, I'm going to also get uh, a message body and uh, I'm also using the logger to log the information you know what I'm doing with uh, with a specific uh, message so the message body in this case is going to be a message that we previously sent to the Azure service bus and uh, the idea from my side is that this message has uh, a certain format that it's in JSON and uh, it is of type of email service bus message. And if I go to definition of this uh, service bus message, I see it here. I have a sender email, recipient email, message body, and a subject. So this is actually right here. So I also included this project quickly uh, so that you can essentially see what kind of properties do I expect uh, to use in my function. So this is a minimum of, of uh, properties required to send a decent email. So you have uh, the information who is sending email, to which email address, what is going to be a body, so the, the message itself, and what is going to be a subject of the message. So essentially you don't need anything else uh, but this to send a message. Now, when you go to the function, the first thing that you actually need to do is, you know, you need to deserialize the object. You need to deserialize this JSON to something that you're going to work with. And in this case, this is an email service bus message. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to use the email client to send a message. This is always the, the approach that I'm using. So every time I'm using a specific uh, technology as an interface. So in this case, the function itself is just an interface, you know, how I'm going to call my business logic. And I really don't care 
about the business logic itself in the function. So I don't, I don't write uh, technology or specific business logic is always extracted to some place else. And this is uh, the, the business logic that I have. Uh, actually, this is an interface. And right here I have uh, email processor and the email processor is essentially grabbing just a couple of things. So I have a logger as well for the email processor and I'm using uh, options for the SMTP configuration. So I'm going to come to this right now. So the SMTP configuration is needed to essentially uh, connect to the email server and to send a message. And uh, the complete SMTP configuration is written right here. Quite, quite simple. So you have a server, port, username, password, and enable SSL. In this case, I'm using the Gmail itself to send an email message. It is really, really simple. And uh, the whole logic is, is relatively easy to do so. So first thing is that we're essentially creating a new email message. And after we have created an email message, we are building the SMTP client by using the, the values from the configuration. So SMTP server, we're using a port, and then we are setting up the, also the other properties like credentials, um, default credentials usage and enable SSL. And the last thing here is to essentially send a message. It's relatively easy to do that. I'm also logging a bit of information about it and uh, that's, that's the whole logic of it. Now, the only thing that I added a bit uh, different than the classic uh, functions is that I also created this uh, startup function here. And this startup function here enables me to do a bit of a, a dependency injection way of, of building my code. Um, by using this, I'm able to uh, build the, the options. The options is, is a fancy name for the configuration. So uh, right here, the parts I, which I'm injecting here with I options, uh, this is essentially what I'm building right here. So I'm building my options, the SMTP configuration, uh, which is right here, SMTP server port, username, password, and enable SSL, which is part of, of this uh, business part of the logic. And, sorry, and then here, what I'm saying is, okay, you should configure me this uh, options uh, in a way that, you know, I'm expecting to have the SMTP configuration of uh, properties in my uh, settings. And if I go to the settings, you will see that there is an SMTP configuration and there you have the, the dots here and saying SMTP server and the same thing for port, username, password, enable SSL. So one thing that you should note here is that uh, the, the functions, at least at the moment, they're not really happy with a nested uh, JSON. So how do they manage this? So you have one level JSON already inside values and then you just uh, separate them by the dot. So, so it's, it's, it's relatively, relatively uh, simple. Um, yeah, and right here we're getting a section, we're putting the value of the SMTP configuration side, the options, we're registering those options here so we can just uh, use the values uh, with, uh, with I options uh, interface. And the last thing is, I'm, I'm also saying, okay, give me a single tone of uh, I email sender and uh, for the email processor. So this means that uh, this is essentially a life cycle of, of this uh, registration. So you have uh, different, different life cycles and you can read about them and maybe I'm going to talk about them sometimes in the future. But um, yeah, for, for now, it's just important that you understand that my dependency injection is going to every time when I'm using I email sender use email processor. And if you just go here, it is that, that that's everything you need. So you have the client, the client itself is resolving the, the, the rest of the things. And if I want to debug my functions, it is it is relatively simple to do so. So the only thing that you have to do, you have to press uh, the play button and your emulator uh, for the Azure functions is going to pop up. So it, it went on, on my other screen at the moment, but uh, now it is, it is here. And it recognizes already that I have an email function which is triggered by the service bus trigger. And the next thing would be to essentially send a message 
uh, from the from the uh, Azure in this case to the uh, to my client, so to my service bus, which, which is going to be picked by my client. So typically in real life scenarios, obviously we're not going to go to the Azure uh, Azure portal and do this every time, but it it is a good scenario. Uh, to, for instance, have this function in your, let's say, a web application where someone is uh, registering or someone made a purchase and you want to send an email to that person. And then um, from that function, you're going to essentially, or that web application, you're going to essentially uh, build your, your message, your contract, which is being expected as well here. And so in the form of, in this case, email service bus message, you're going to serialize this message. So you're going to create some sort of JSON of it or XML or whatever you want. And uh, you're going to send this message to the queue, in this case, email messages queue. And then this function is going to be automatically triggered. So relatively simple process and this is what I'm going to emulate uh, right uh, now. So the best way to test our function and to bug through it is uh, with Azure Portal. So how do we how do we do this? Well, essentially, you can access the Azure Portal using the web browser, which is really the case that I'm going to use right now. So I have already logged in uh, logged into the portal itself, and I have, as you may see, created a service bus namespace with appropriate uh, queues. So the queues are essentially the thing that we're targeting today. And if I just click here for a second, you will see that I have uh, email message queues, which corresponds to the first parameter here in the service bus trigger. And uh, obviously the reason is because the service bus trigger is essentially listening uh, to the specific queue for the given uh, connection. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this uh, function, uh, sorry, queue here. And inside this queue, I'm going to get a bit more options. And one of the coolest options that I have is a service bus explorer. It is in the preview mode, as you may see here, but the service bus explorer allows us to essentially send, receive, and to peek into the queue. So why is this really cool? Well, we don't really need to build any console application or anything like this to send a message. We can just do this from the browser directly and we can test the functionality of our code, which is pretty neat. So how do we do this? So we make sure that we're on the send option, send tab, and then from the content type, we choose whatever it's appropriate for our code. And in my case, this is really application JSON. So I'm going to choose this. And inside this body here, I'm just going to write JSON. So how do I write JSON? So standard as always. And what this JSON should look like? Well, obviously it should look like exactly like the message that I'm expecting right here. So if you see here, I'm expecting the message body and then this message body, I'm deserializing for the email service bus message. So this JSON here needs to correspond to this model in order to be successfully deserialized. So what can we do? We can essentially just go inside the definition of this class and then we see that we need a sender email, recipient email, message body and a subject. So I'm just going to copy sender email first and I'm just going to paste it here. What I can do as well, I can just copy this a couple of times and then my uh, copy pasting is going to be much more efficient. Okay. And I need a subject. So let's start. Oops. Message body was not copied as expected. Okay. No problem. So sender email. Uh, sender email usually is the email address of the um, SMTP uh, account in this case. I'm going to use exactly this account. I have already prepared it. And uh, this is the account which I'm authenticating with. You can, by the way, put any email address that you want. It doesn't even need to be a real e email address in this field. Recipient email. I have already clicked on the temporary email. So disposable email address. I'm just going to copy this one and hopefully I will get something in my inbox here. So pasting this one. And in the message body, I'm just going to write this is body of email. And in a subject, well, the subject, let's say something like this. So how do we send the message? We just click send. And 
just before I do this, I want to do one more thing. And this is I want to set a breakpoint inside my function because I want to see how the execution of this function is going. So let me just go back quickly to the portal. I'm going to click send button. As you may see, the message is being sent and I just automatically jumped into my Visual Studio. I didn't have any clicks or any tabs or anything like this. Uh, debugger was, was hit. Uh, message body, if you see, it is exactly what I was sending. And I can just simply run through my code. I can send the mess, see the message and run exactly through everything that um, my code is designed to do so. So it is exactly the same as you would do it with um, console application or something similar. Now, if I go quickly to the temp email, I see that I have received an email and let me just read it. So you see from, from who is this email? I have a subject, I have a body of the email, everything that I have specified here. So this is, this is actually it. This is everything that you need to, to create um, uh, uh, email function or email service or you, you can call this like microservice or software as a service you can call it as ever, uh, however you want but um, essentially having this kind of services um, in, in reusable state exactly how it is right here is going to be quite helpful for you if you're trying to build some startup or even if you're building some enterprise applications because honestly uh, writing a lot of uh, same code is, is, is not probably the best way um, to do your work. So right now you can plug in this function, whatever you want. It is relatively simple. It expects minimum amount of parameters uh, that uh, you need. And the best thing is the code itself, the business logic to send a message is not even inside the function itself. So let's say that uh, tomorrow morning, uh, someone tells you, okay, we're not using functions, we're going to use Windows services or something similar. The only thing that you need to uh, make sure is that, you know, you reference correct library, you create new instance of email processor, and then essentially you can just execute exactly the same business logic. So that's it uh, from me for today. So thank you very much for your time and uh, I wish you a happy coding. Bye.